You're on Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist. And if it's your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. And of course, leave us a thumbs up and put your comments down below. Always love to hear your feedback. But tonight we have from the Wrecking Crew, this man has played with the Monkees, Bosquez, Seals and Croft, Lionel Richie, Gladys Knight, Marvin Gaye, the Parched Family, Whitney Houston, Oh my God, the list goes on and on. Ricky Nelson, well, anyway, he's here to tell us some stories. And you're going to like this one. This man also knocked the Beatles off the number one chart. Wait till you hear that. Anyway, put your hands together for the legendary Mr. Louis Shelton. It's all starting now. Don't touch that dial. <laughs> and Hal, Hal and Don were very close. Uh, we and we did all of the Nancy Sinatra stuff together too. But uh, me and Hal and Joe Osborne did uh, most of the Carpenter stuff. Did you? And, yeah. Uh, we did close to you. Close to you. And uh, top of the world. And we've only just begun. We did those. Only just begun. But, uh, you know, here's an interesting story. When I first got to L.A. before I was doing sessions, really, I mean, I hadn't gotten into that click yet. Mm -hmm. Somehow, uh, Glenn Campbell introduced me to Joe Osborne at a uh, Ricky Nelson session. And me and Joe, that's where we became buddies. Well, he knew Richard and Karen before they were anybody. And uh, we went into Joe's garage and did, did their demos that got him their deal at A&M Records. So that's how far back I go with those guys. Wow. Yeah. But so many people that I recorded with uh, are, are that we, we recorded with this was their first thing and nobody knew them and we, nobody knew they would be a hit or not, you know? Um, like uh, I toured with Mama Cass and David Crosby be years before they were anybody. Um, but someone like the Jackson Five or, or, or David Cassidy with the Partridge family, when we're in there doing their sessions, uh, we didn't know if it would be a hit or not because we were doing we were doing that with other people as well and yeah. it wasn't always hits and right in the middle of a good dream first time i had to audition i sat down and i picked up my guitar and i started riffing and they went actually we won't be asking you to play guitar we have larry carlton and louis shelton oh okay uh, and Hal Blaine will be playing drums, and Joe Osborne and Max Bennett will be playing bass, and Larry Nechtel and Mike Melvoin will be playing keyboards. And I went, oh, <laughs> I guess I won't be playing. Uh, I had a thing show up on my Facebook uh, page yesterday. Uh, Wrecking Crew always, uh, whenever it's the birthday of someone that we've worked with as the Wrecking Crew, I say, Hal Blaine, uh, Joe Osborne, Tommy Tedesco, David Cassidy, the producer, and myself, and and they're all gone except me. Wow, every one crazy. of them, every single one of them, including the producer. Crazy. Mike Melvoin was the keyboard player. I was trying to think of. Wow. But yeah, there's very few of us left. Me and Don, and Don Peak still around. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did a thing in, in uh, over in the Valley while I was there. We did a Wrecking Crew show. Just did a guest spot. I did I Want You Back, the Jackson 5 tune with them. Yeah. It's so cool. It's the Jackson 5. That, that lick. I mean, can you tell me about that session? Just that whole, it's magical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our very first, as far as I can remember, our very first session with them, and and we hadn't seen them other than uh, Diana Ross had brought them in to us one day and said, we're going to make stars out of these guys. Then they were gone and we didn't see them. Next thing I know, we're in the studio with uh, 
with the two writers and the producer and us four or five musicians. And the first tune we're working up is I Want You Back. And there's no chart for that. I think we had a, a publishing uh, sheet with the lyrics on it or something like that. Maybe the chord changes. So all of that intricate work, we built that from the ground up. They started with the bass part that don't, do 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 And then they said, we, they finally got that all worked out. And they said, okay, well now Don, double that part, you know? And so then they, they got the, the, the boom, da 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 da. And, and then I just started playing that ding, ding, ding. Not as a joke, but just fooling around because there was no rhythm to that thing. It was starting and stopping. And the uh, producer looked over and said, yeah, what, what are you playing there? And said, oh, just ching, 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 ching. I thought, That's good. That kind of glues the thing together. And so as intricate as that track is, we just, we built it from nothing to one of the greatest pop songs ever. And it just so happened that uh, they called me down to do some um, additional guitar parts on, on, on the evening after we cut that. And when I went in, Michael Jackson was doing his vocal. He was the only one there. None of the other Jackson 5 was there. Just Michael out there, 11 years old, you know, with the microphone and... Uh, he was ripping that vocal, man. And I'm telling you, I'd never seen anything like it. And I was so fortunate to be able to witness that, you know, his very first record and as great as it was. And that record still, I talk about a record that holds up today, you know, wherever you're at and you hear that, you're going to start patting your foot, you know, because that's just great, great record. Hundred percent, amazing. And what you're playing on it, it's keeping the time when you got the bass line moving. It's over there messing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just a bit of luck, you know. It just, it just kind of fell together, you know. But it had a good foundation to play to, and uh, it was and, their first single, I believe. Right? It was. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was it their, had to be their first single. It was, was sixteen we recorded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, wow. What what history and seeing this little eleven year old? Where does that even come from? Yeah, I mean, I was amazed. I went to home told my wife. I just saw the most amazing thing because I had no idea that he was that good. I'd never heard him sing. No one had. And uh, you knew, you knew right away. This. this oh kid, yeah. This oh kid. yeah take it over and that was the first time i'd actually heard the song we, we 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 did the track without knowing what was going to be saying over the top of it so when i first when i heard the oh well yeah now i get it you know fantastic was the father there joe jackson in the studio oh no well? we never no. saw him never no. seen him i doubt if they let him in the studio really <laughs> I, I <laughs> so the boys the, the boys meaning jackson the kids the group, they had their, they had everything together. They were ready. They were prepared in there pretty much with their. Well, I, I would say that the producers and writers worked with them as hard as they did with us musicians. And mm -hmm. because those parts don't just fall together. They've really got to be inspired and worked on and, and made to fit, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Uh, it's not something that you, uh, some guys could just walk in and start s trying stuff. Uh, the, the the writers and producer were were figuring all of that out, and and the guys did a very good job of learning it. But yeah, they had so, probably never heard the song either. Yeah, you know, before they came in. 
So that was around, was that around the time when Motown left Detroit and went to Hollywood around that yeah, period? Yeah, it was exactly that time because they were in Hollywood and they didn't bring out any of their musicians to L.A. James James and all those cats were just in Detroit yeah. still, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, one time when we did the uh, Marvin Gaye album, he brought Jamie Jamerson out and I got to sit next to him and play, which really? was got for me. Know. I mean, we had played uh, the four top stuff in the clubs and admired that bass line stuff for all those years. And here I am sitting next to the guy that played it, you know, oh, but man. that's the only time I ever saw him. I don't that know. Long time. Yeah, that one time and that Marvin Gaye session. I don't know why they wouldn't have brought him out there, uh, Motown, you know, uh, or any of those guys, because they had, you know, they've made so many great records together. But uh, maybe it was a business decision. They didn't want to pay to fly them out hotel. We'll get local guys out here to play. Who knows? Well, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. But Motown had so much money that 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 did, it didn't seem like that would have been an issue. But yeah. uh, they were able to put some guys together, and probably uh, it was a newer sound for Motown with the Jackson Five, you know, ABC and all of that. Uh, it was first time I used a fuzz tone on a record was for that. Do 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 do. do. I just had a cheap fuzz tone on the floor that I clicked on for that. Uh, so yeah, it was it was kind of a new sound. Uh, so for for that fuzz tone, when you were doing it, did the, the producers say, "Hey," or you were just messing around with that? And they no, go, hey. I did it. No, they they did didn't it. say do that. They didn't even know what it was. Or, or, they'd never heard of a fuzz tone. Uh, I just did it to, out of you know my crazy way of thinking it's great it's well, who turned you on to the fuss what made you what influenced you to bring it down to the session oh god i don't know um i don't know um my first uh, uh connection with a fuzz tone uh was were years before i was in, in santa fe and gibson came out with the first fuzz tone that i i i ever saw and I bought it and brought it into this club that I was, we were playing jazz standards and I bought it because it said, this makes your guitar sound like a sax. So I plugged it in. <laughs> it didn't sound like a sax to me. It sounded like I just broken my speaker, you know? So I never used that one. Um, and then later on, um, I don't know, maybe I, I got it because I was listening to, uh, Jeff Beck on uh, uh, on on that song where he used a, a fuzz tone or something, uh, and so I, I had it there. But anything that we didn't have uh, foot pedals in, in in those days, but every time something new would come out, I'd get it. You know, yeah. I had one of the first wah wah pedals and one of the first choruses and you know delays, all that. And I've got a hundred of them over there on the shelf now. But I don't use many of them. Uh, I, I, I probably have the, the smallest pedal board in history. Uh, really? What, what was your what was your setup for like ABC for that? You you had was it a simple setup? A little amp that you had? Um, yeah, and, and that fuzz tone. That was it. That was it. And there, uh, I was plugged into the fuzz tone, and. Uh, I think I even bypassed the amp and went from a fuzz tone into a direct box because Motown used to have us do that a lot uh, because the amps were bleeding into the drum microphones and yeah. like the piano mics. They would have us unplug and plug into a direct box, which we all hated. It sounded terrible to us. The direct box, huh? Yeah, but it worked, sounded okay on the records, you know. They made it work. Yeah. Let me tell you something, ABC. You know what you did in music history with your with that little fuzz box. You know what you did? You knocked the Beatles off the charts with Jackson Five ABC. That was Louis Shelton. And if you want to catch more of this episode, unedited, uncut, check out All Access Backstage Pass in Patreon. Links are down below. Also, make sure you click on the box right up here for something really good that's going to pop up. Until then, everybody, it's only rock and roll, and we like it. And remember, who loves you, baby? We do. Now, 
get out of here, you crazy kids.